I'm not sure if I mentioned this. I don't know if anybody, uh, if you can tell from the video, if you remember what was hanging right here. That <laughs> was a gumball machine <laughs> in a birdhouse that I built on uh, party week. Uh, it lasted for maybe five days or so, and then a bear ran off with it, which... You know, in hindsight, of course that was going to happen, but it seemed like a fun thing and silly thing to build, so I built it, and uh, yeah, it just disappeared. Came by here for the less than a week I had it. I drive by on the four-wheeler, come zipping down the trail, er, stop here, grab a few peanut butter M&Ms, and take off again, and uh, came by the next day, and... I, I, I looked at it and I thought, oh, I'm at the wrong tree. And I looked back and forth and I saw the two screws and it's gone. There was no sign of it. Tito and I went out uh, a few days ago and did a sweep probably out to 500 yards all the way around. Just did like a circle all the way around. Found nothing. Goddamn bear. It's at least the third time he's been in camp that I know of. I mean... You can't blame them if you leave a gumball machine full of candy out there in the woods. And it seems really obvious that it was just going to disappear. It's going to get broken into by some kind of animal. Uh, I couldn't help it. Couldn't keep myself from doing it. It was fun to build. And I got one more gumball machine. So anybody have any ideas? I'd like to build. I was thinking about building exactly the same thing with a bunch more screws and then just doing one layer of metal all the way around it or something. Anybody got any ideas how I can do the other one before I hang it up and have that disappear? Let me know if you think of anything. I'll do it. I swear, I'm crazy. I'll do it. Well, it's getting cold. Not super cold, but enough that this all froze solid overnight. Oh, there's a little bit of bubble in there, right in the middle. You always gotta keep a little bit of, I always think of it as like seed water. If you don't have a little bit of liquid water, it's a lot more of a problem to deal with this, but start the stove up and run it for, I don't know, half an hour, hour or something. Dump this water in the pot, get it hot, Dump it into one of those, shake it up, get some of the ice to melt, dump it back in, just go back and forth and back and forth. Check that out. So while I'm cooking ice into drinking water, I'm gonna work on my Kuxa cup. It turns out that I think by law you can't have an outdoor YouTube channel without making a Kuxa cup. Like, I don't know, somewhere it's in the bylaws or something, so I started making one. I actually wanna use it. Uh, I don't wanna just set it on the shelf or something. The only thing I use a mug for is coffee in the morning. So I did a bunch of looking around and actually took a couple hours online and I found some resin that's food safe uh good up to boiling temperature so i'm gonna finish it with that the log if you saw the video uh where tito and i made my tent platform that was early summer uh we cut down a birch tree and the inside of it was just gorgeous like really nice wood and then the center was almost like a rose uh of darker wood it's just beautiful so we cut it up and set it all aside and Use that, we split split a piece of that uh, to make this kooksa cup. So, this is what's been done so far. That's pretty sweet. Alright, I can see the cup. Can you see the cup? Been wanting to try making a kooksa cup, so get this awesome piece of birch. And never done it, don't know what they're supposed to look like, but I'm just guessing on the size.
I don't think I've ever even seen one of these in real life. I guess two finger holes in the same line. And then long edge on it. Generating a lot of heat over here. Oh, shit, that almost knocked me in the nuts. So here's the trick. This resin will only work set correctly if it's around 70 to 75 degrees, which I don't have any way of controlling the weather. Wish I did. Uh, so I'm gonna have to, I think I'm gonna use the wood stove in the lean-to. I mean, I can't control it that well. It's a crappy old stove. It has a lot of air leaks and everything. So I'm just gonna see if I can get it around there. I have to get the wood up to temperature, the resin up to temperature, and try to brush it on, pour it on. I switched this, this was uh, two holes for two fingers in here, but I want to be able to use it when I wear my gloves so I can get two gloved fingers in there or without my gloves I can get three fingers inside that. I think that'll be nice and cozy. I don't know if that's what a kooks is really supposed to look like, but it's something like that. I'm going to keep the uh, ice melting in the pot over there while I do some sanding. If you leave your jugs too full like this when they freeze, you can only fit that much hot water in it, so it's going to take about two, three, probably three or four times back and forth to get all this ice out of here and make it drinkable again. There's a lot of ice in that guy. Still is. I think I'll let it set for a little bit. That'd be enough, good enough for tonight anyway. Or this evening. I don't need more than that for the evening. Oh crap, I forgot about my dishes water. <laughs> oh, 
Did I mention that I hate sanding? I hate it. There's nothing fun about sanding, which is why, I mean, look at this table. This is how I make stuff. Chainsaw it, put it together, it's usable. You won't find a single sandpaper scratch on this table. I guess I didn't make a video of building this thing. I don't know why. But that is not sanded, because sanding is stupid. It, I mean, it kind of looks cool like that, with just the knife marks in it, but... I don't know. This piece of wood's so beautiful, I think we gotta sand it out and see what the grain looks like. I mean, even that's pretty, but right here is that big rose that was in the center of the center of the log. I don't know if you can see it, but just this is like red, dark red. So gonna have to sand it down to see what it looks like. <laughs> You know what? Who am I kidding? <laughs> I'm not a caveman. Man, you might be surprised to learn how much easier that is. Sometimes I just have to remind myself that the only reason I'm out here is to entertain me. <laughs> I love this thing. This is great. Now it's actually fun. What kind of sick and twisted freak would hand sand if they didn't have to. You want to know how much I hate sanding? I'm not sanding the inside of this thing. That's ridiculous. I'm just going to bowl gouge. Uh, it's not a bowl gouge. I don't even know what kind of gouge this is. I'm just going to make some cool patterns in there with this. Oh yeah, maybe chip the whole thing up like that. That'll look cool, right? Better than sanding that crap out. Five o'clock, it's quitting time. Said the sun. And these short days are, well it's not even five. Yeah, it's five. Short days are no good. But, I just got this thing rough sanded and I got it all dimpled on the inside so it'll fly real far. So we'll get it uh, finished up tomorrow. And it's another morning. It wasn't even that cold last night. Probably gone through, I'm guessing like five or six gallons of camp fuel since February. I've probably used 15 gallons of chainsaw uh, bar oil. And who knows how many gallons of chainsaw uh, gas this year. 15 gallons, usually you buy like, you know, a quart and it lasts you five years for home use. Frozen. Since I hate throwing stuff away, I had these uh, old toilet bowl ring seals like for under a toilet and it's wax. So it makes a cool fire starter. That was my brother's idea and I've got all these cardboard boxes I was just gonna burn but why not make a fire starter out of it would it work I'm kind of thinking like a bunch of little pieces I'm thinking like put it up by the top and then maybe it would drip down in there Maybe it wouldn't. <laughs> it's hard to say. But I got a bunch of twine. I could just make a bunch of these out of the boxes and the rings. Tie them up so they stay twisted. Then every time I light a fire, I could just use one of these. I mean, I like using that torch, but... What do you think? That'll burn, right? Good. That works great. That's already like two or three minutes. I'm going to make a bunch of these. Wow. Crazy.
Amazon Prime toilet torches. Man shears. That'll do for a while, eh? All right, let's see if we can get that resin warmed up a little bit. And these things work great. I guess I just jam it in there and leave it, huh? You think I should sell them on Amazon? Etsy? Probably Etsy. The Deluxe Tactical Toilet Bowl Lighter. It's gonna sell like hotcakes. Mmm, hotcakes. All right, let's see what we got here. What we got to start with, I bet it's 32. Oh, it was already turned on. 31 and a half. And we gotta be at 75 ideally. Put that right there to heat up, right next to uh, Terrence prized hangers that I sent him about 20 years ago. <laughs> I found these in a closet of some apartment I was renting and uh, got his address and mailed them to him. No return address, no message or anything. I couldn't believe he brought them out here and I said, I recognize, I recognize those from somewhere. And he said, yeah, you, you mailed them to me years ago. It's one of my prized possessions. All right, I think that's about enough. Pretty smooth. I can't wait to see what all that uh, green looks like in there. It's actually quite warm in here, so I wouldn't be surprised if this is way too hot. 62? Oh man, we still got a long ways to go. I'm gonna build that fire back up a bit. It's funny, you get so used to being in, living in this temperature that uh, even when it's 60s and the 60s in here, I thought it was 85 or something. So I gotta crank it up and actually keep this door closed. I usually leave it open because you'll see there's no floor in here and when it rains a lot, this floor gets all wet. So moisture builds up on the inside of everything and I get uh, mildew and stuff growing in here. So. Whenever I run that, try to keep the door open to get the moisture out, but it's not going to get that resin up to temp, so we'll close it up for a while and see if that does it. Well, just as it was almost up to temperature, I realize I don't have my postage scale here, which is how you measure that stuff out when you get such small quantities, you have to weigh it instead of just trying to eyeball it because <clears throat> it's a two-part mixture and they're not equal parts. So I think I'm gonna have to do that at my other place. I got a place I rented again for the winter and I've rented it the last bunch of years. Um, and I'll be probably going there for a day or two a week just to thaw everything out, dry out my sleeping bag, get water, get cleaned up, all that stuff, and then come right back out here. So um, the label on that resin says it takes 24 hours to dry and then three whole days to actually completely cure. And I gotta put on several coats. There's no way to keep that fire going in there for three days straight. I mean, if it's 20 degrees, there's no way it's ever gonna dry. So I'll probably have to do the last little bit just the coating it and drying it uh at the other cabin so they got this cool thing do you ever see this in uh, other youtube videos where they just go like this and put their hand up against the lens and then they pull it off and like time jump forward you should try that what the f 
See, totally worked. I knew it would. <laughs> well, I uh, had to pack up and drive a couple hours, do some uh, computer work, pay some bills, uh, clean out the four-wheeler. It's so packed with mud from the last however many months driving through those mud holes that as soon as it gets below freezing and sits for 15 minutes, it freezes in place. The brakes don't work. It also uh, needs a couple new parts, having trouble shifting and stuff, so I'm gonna wrench a little bit on that today. And while I'm here uh, and have a place to work, I'm gonna put a couple coats on that kooksa. It's about time to do that. I can't wait to see what it looks like with some resin on there. And uh, I got my postage scale, so let's go ahead and put some on, see what it looks like. Oh man, that's pretty. <laughs> Holy cow, that is gorgeous. Wow. And I made way too much resin. I was trying to pop the bubbles, but they're actually just coming right out of the wood. So I'll just let them go. Still have to do at least one more coat. So I'll sand them down after that and recoat it once uh, and heat the resin up quite a bit more. You can see I tried to put it on pretty thin and wipe it all down, but it's just slowly sliding off the whole thing. The resin wasn't quite warm enough, so whatever. This is where the good people of the world come to drink coffee in the morning. It's also really the only place I have to dry out my boots. Pull the liners out and rotate them around the heater for half an hour and get most of the moisture out of them. Otherwise, all that sweat just builds up over the days and feet, feet stay cold the whole time. I also leave one jug of water in here, which grows up at night, but anytime there's a heater on, try to keep some water directly over it. Keep it from turning into a rock. It's the maiden voyage. I couldn't uh, put my coffee in my thermos this morning because it was frozen. <clears throat> couldn't get the cap off. Even this I couldn't get to the little on-off thing to toggle. Had to boil it in some water, but comes out now. Always got to have the ubiquitous Pop-Tart. I think that's my rap name. The ubiquitous Pop-Tart. doesn't even taste like plastic. That's quite something. <clears throat> there could be worse ways to start the day, right? I mean, it's kind of hard getting out of bed when everything you own is frozen. I couldn't get my snow pants zipped because they were frozen like a, like a board, but getting to come sit out here and drink coffee out of a homemade kooksa and have a pop tart and look for the deer, it's not too bad. This time of year, an awful lot of uh, time and effort goes to just keeping drinking water uh, thawed out and keeping food from freezing and drying out gloves and pants and everything. This is really the only place I have to dry anything other than 
you know, an occasional drive in the car, I'll turn the heater on high and <laughs> put everything that's wet in there, try to get it to dry out. So I think the, the next video, I'm going to just do a few little shots and show you what some of the struggles are of trying to live out here through the winter in a tent. Uh, and there are many of them. It's still worth it. I'd rather be out here uh, dealing with the cold and all my stuff freezing than be in a house laying on a couch. I know that doesn't make sense to a lot of people, but I love it. It's been such a great year living out in the woods that I can't imagine it coming to an end anytime soon. So appreciate you guys watching. Uh, give it a like if you like. Uh, let me know if there's anything you guys want to see more of. Put it in the comments. And the, you guys, you guys are my entertainment out here making these videos. I mean, other than building stuff, I do that for entertainment. But by five o'clock, it's dark. Come in here. Turn the heater on, read a book, read your comments, uh, respond back to them. I do have to, uh, now that it's so cold out here, my uh, editing battery, my big car battery doesn't even work anymore. I think it's down to about maybe less than 50% capacity because of the cold. So I do have to leave here about once a week and uh, find a nice warm place with uh, unlimited electricity and heat sit there and spend a couple days editing each video. Other than that, I'll be here. Keep sending the comments. I read them. I love to hear from you guys. See you next time.